Hello everyone. Let us today start about the prerequisites to the reactive power compensation. Our main goal of this particular series will be to understand the reactive power compensation in detail. But before learning such a great concept, you need to understand the basic building blocks. If you have the fundamentals good, you are definitely going to learn it conceptually and you will be able to better implement it in the industry. Now to understand that, I personally believe that you need a thorough understanding of power factor in order to get to compensation. So now we'll be starting with the understanding of power factor. What exactly is power factor? We all understand the theoretical or the mathematical concept. The mathematical concept of a power factor is basically it is the ratio of real power to the apparent power. Rings a bell? Yeah, definitely. Mathematically, it is totally fine. But how do you physically understand it and what implication it has physically on a substation or on an industry that we are going to understand briefly in this particular video? And I'll be coming up with more videos like this so that you can understand thoroughly what power factor is, how improvement happens, what are the various techniques. These topics will be covered separately in different videos so that the video length doesn't uh, say become huge. Okay, we'll be covering it in two, three, four video lectures. Let us now start with understanding power factor. So uh, the first thing that you need to understand is the single line diagram. Look, this is the supply grid. This is a step down transformer step down transformer will be stepping down a 16 kV voltage level to a 415 volt line to line voltage. We will be having a local bus bar. So from here from this particular place your jurisdiction will start. Okay. From here you will be having your jurisdictions. So you have to take care of whatever is happening here. Whatever is going on here is not under your control. It is totally governed by the power utility, the grid or the state electricity board. So what will happen is if you are consuming some current, say I am consuming some current I, the similar current has to flow from the grid, right? It is a step up transformer. So definitely the level of current is going to increase. But the metering unit, you have to understand the grid metering unit will be set somewhere here, right? So whatever the current you are drawing here, if I am drawing current I, this meter will be reading the current I and it will be recording the active power in kilowatt hour and that active power will be root 3 into VI into cos phi if it is a three phase supply and VI into cos phi if it is a single phase supply. Now you have to understand that cos phi plays a very important role here. Let us understand now, if I have some load, right? If I have some load one, load one, that is purely lagging load. So purely lagging means it is an inductive load, right? If it is an inductive load, what will happen is it will be drawing 10 kVR from the grid. Now, if you understand the concept of voltage stability, you will understand that if you have a larger reactive power demand at a particular bus bar, which cannot be supplied from the source, what will happen is there will be a continuous voltage drop in that bus bar and that bar cannot be considered as stable bus bar. If I have a 415 volt, there has to be a certain limit of voltage regulation which shouldn't be exceeded. So what will happen is in order to achieve this bus bar voltage to 415 volt, the grid will do its best and push the reactive power. If it pushes the reactive power, what will happen is that the current will increase. This current is going to increase and hence the resistive losses are going to increase. So it will be a power loss to the grid. Though in this billing component, it will not be having any component of the lagging power factor because for the lagging power factor, the cos phi value is zero. And hence, if I do a VI cos phi, it will read zero. So the meter is going to read zero, right? So in that case, the grid has opted for a penalty. In case you are not maintaining a power factor close to unity, the grid is going to 
penalize you for the same because the grid has to put extra effort just to maintain the voltage V because you are the culprit. You are not maintaining your loads properly. You are driving some reactive loads and, and no compensation is being done from your part. So the grid is going to penalize you. Now to avoid that particular penalty, what we do is we opt for reactive power compensation. Reactive power compensation is done in the form of capacitor banks and how it is done I will teach you in the next lecture practically. Here uh, we are going to look through some phasor diagram. Let us start further. So here you have to understand that we have this V and we have this I okay right. So we have the voltage V you can see the voltage V here and the voltage V here. This is the bus bar voltage. This is the current I, the current which I am going to draw from the grid through the bus bar. And the angle between voltage and current is phi. In case of practical loads, in case of practical loads, I will be having resistive as well as inductive load. So, in that case, I can resolve this particular current into two parts. One will be parallel to the voltage V and the other will be perpendicular to the voltage V that is 90 degree out of phase. If I resolve the current, we will be getting these two components. The component in series with the voltage is termed as IR and the current in perpendicular or 90 degree out of phase from the voltage is considered as IL. Why am I considering it, it as IR and IL that we will understand. So IR is basically the component of current that is resistive in nature. You should understand that resistance draws a current that is in phase with the voltage. So this current is basically resistance and resistors are basically the heater elements. The heater elements which are going to cause the heat, uh, heating loss. Now this inductive component from where does this inductive component come? So the industries have huge motors you know and these motors will be having these windings. These windings are basically a, a lot of coils you know a lot of coiling is there and those coils are basically producing the magnetic field and to produce the magnetic field will be requiring the reactive power or a component of the current which is a 90 degree out of phase by the voltage. So this inductive current comes from these large industrial motors. I hope you have understood this. Now what is going to happen is if I keep on increasing the demand for these inductive inductive currents if I keep on augmenting my plant say if I keep on augmenting the capacity today I have three motors tomorrow I'll go for six motors 10 motors 20 motors what will happen is the grid will be in great stress to meet my reactive power demand and if the reactive power demand increases what will happen is this angle phi is going to increase you can see right if you have the reactive component of current high if I have in this case what is happening current is this right if my inductive current goes high up to say at this level my current will be this so clearly you can see that this particular angle is less than this particular angle so in that case my power factor is deteriorating so we have to closely watch that we compensate the reactive component look we cannot reduce the reactive component because if i have the requirement i'll have to augment i'll have to buy new motors enter it in the plant synchronize it to the grid and you know start feeding it so it is inevitable il il cannot be reduced but what i can do is i can connect a capacitor i can connect a capacitive element that is going to supply the lagging current to the bus bar so what will happen is initially the total load to supply the lagging reactive reactive power to the motors was on the grid but now that load is being shared by the capacitive current this ic so if i have a load of 10 kvar which was earlier purely provided by the grid now if I have a compensating unit, a capacitor bank of 5 kVR, then the load on the grid is going to be reduced from 10 kVR to 5 kVR, that is 10 minus 5. So now let us see how it happens. So 
I have uh, these are capacitors banks, uh, capacitor banks. Okay, so these capacitor banks are uh, means connected to the grid, and uh, tapping or removal of the banks happen. It happens automatically. We are going to learn everything later. So now let us go for it. If you understand here, if I have the current IC here, which is going to negate the effect of IL, what will happen is the value of IL will reduce to IL1 and the current I1 will be this. You have to observe that this particular angle is reducing. So now, if you see, this would be the new scenario after tapping the capacitor bank. Okay, so this will be phi1. Earlier, we had uh, this scenario when no compensation was, oh, was there, no IC was there. So you clearly can understand here that cos phi1 is greater than cos phi so the power factor is basically improving so to summarize everything let us see let us recall that whatever deterioration in the power factor is happening that is happening due to the inductive lagging component of the current and it can be compensated locally uh, by the use of capacitor bank these capacitor banks can be used locally in order to compensate this current IL since we do not have any control on the load IL because it is totally dependent on the load parameters of the motors and all. So we will be connecting a, a capacitor bank IC to improve the power factor. I hope you have understood the basic theory of this power factor and later in another video we will see how capacitor banks practically help in controlling the power factor will go with a small simulation I'll make a small simulation simulation model and we will study the currents you know if I tap the capacitor what happens if I remove what happens and then we'll be able to learn properly so thank you for watching the video if you like the video please like it and subscribe it subscribe to my channel the electrical concepts thank you very much